Each month, I count down the top 10 hottest games as per Board Game Geek's daily hotness stats, and hundreds of different games appear on that list each month, with some games rocketing up the chart, but not actually reaching the top 10, and therefore going unmentioned. So, I recently started tracking these games as well to include in their own top 10. This top 10 of games with momentum, in a series which, thanks to a suggestion by viewer Sarah Traeger, is officially called Momentum. So which games have momentum this month? Well, first up is Space Base, which rose 32 spots this past month, going from number 150 on the list up to 118. Space Base is a quick-to-learn, quick-to-play dice game based on an it's-my-turn-but-maybe-everyone-will-still-get-to-do-stuff type of mechanism. In the game, players add ships to various spots on their player boards, each of which will pay off with certain rules of the dice. Strategies include long odds that have explosive gains, low luck approach that has a steady income stream, big end game combos, a mix and match approach, or my approach of picking the numbers that aren't going to be rolled at all, pretty much for the entire game. Still, I do really like Space Space, but one thing I don't like is picking up all its little cubes up off the floor after I inevitably knock them off the game boards. So if you're like me, well, first of all, let me know where I put my keys. Secondly, I recommend taking a look at two posts from the Space Space forums that feature overlays for these player boards, which I'll include a link to in this video's description. These overlays, as cool as they are, probably aren't the reason why Space Space rocketed up the charts this month, but I have no idea as to the actual reason why, so, so that's what I'm going with. Also climbing 32 spots from 116 up to 84 is Pandemic, the modern classic in which several virulent diseases have broken out simultaneously all over the world, and the players, who portray disease-fighting specialists, must treat disease hotspots while researching cures for each of those four plagues before they get completely out of hand. Now, according to VideoGamesChronicle.com, the company Epic was planning on giving away a digital version of Pandemic for free during several days throughout February. However, possibly due to the unfortunately very real public health issue being caused by the coronavirus, the free game giveaway has been postponed, with a spokesperson from Epic stating, we've shifted the release of Pandemic as a free game in our store schedule to a later date. What this later date will be hasn't yet been determined, but Epic's digital versions of Ticket to Ride and Carcassonne will still be available for download from February 6th through 13th. The eighth highest climbing game this month, traversing 38 spots to land at number 32 overall, is In the Hall of the Mountain King by Burnt Island Games. In this game, players take on the role of trolls who are rebuilding their abandoned kingdom under a mountain, which Actually, I now realize you probably could have deduced for yourself just from, from the title of the game. With muscle and magic, players will unearth riches, dig out collapsed tunnels, and carve out great halls as they raise the toppled statues of their ancestors back to places of honor at the heart of the mountain. Gameplay is driven by a cascading production system. Players begin with a line of four trolls at their disposal, and then every troll shows the combination of resources — gold, stone, iron, marble, carts, runes, and hammers — that it can produce. Now, when a new troll is hired, it's placed above two other trolls, forming a Troll Pyramid. Troll Pyramid, incidentally, is also the name of the Ponzi scheme that I sell to rude YouTube commenters. The timing of when to hire new trolls versus when to build becomes increasingly important, as players try to maximize their cascades while making sure that they get the trolls that they want from the shared marketplace. After the last player hires their sixth troll, well, the game ends, and the player with the most honor is crowned the new Mountain King. Leaping 50 spots from number 88 to 38 this month is the upcoming game Tekenyu Obelisk of the Sun by Board and Dice. The game board in Tekenyu Obelisk of the Sun is divided into six sections, each associated with an Egyptian god. Now, in the center of the board stands an obelisk, the Tekenyu, that casts its shadow onto different parts of the board. As a result, the area around the obelisk is divided into sunny, shaded, and completely dark regions, depending on how the obelisk is casting its shadow at that particular moment. As the game progresses, the sun's rotation alters the sections that are sunny, shaded, or dark. Now, to be honest, there's, there's not a metric ton of information that's currently available for Tekenyu, but I'm sure that that's going to change as this game nears its release date, which is currently scheduled for July 30th. 
The new version of Kalis, Kalis 1303, jumped 61 spots to settle in at number 74 this month. Listed as one of the first worker placement games ever, Kalis stands among the true board game classics of the 2000s. And now, the game's original design team, together with Space Cowboys, have produced this new, revamped version of the game. This new addition streamlines and modernizes several of the game's mechanisms in order to foster a more intense game in a shorter amount of time. But, <laughs> don't be fooled like, like I was when I invested in that, in that Ponzi scheme, because the game's marketing description tells us that the game has kept both its depth and ease of play while adding a bunch of new features, including variability of the starting position for a virtual infinite number of starting possibilities, characters with special abilities, brand new artwork, and new graphic design. It all sounds so good that you're not even going to miss the ghost-faced kings from the original box art that would stare into your very soul while you played, dissecting every bad decision you've ever, ever made. But someone who hasn't made a bad decision is this episode's sponsor, who purchased the following mid-countdown ad spot. So here's a shout out to them, because this episode is made possible in part by their support. This month's next biggest climber is Seven Wonders Duel, which gained 69 spots, going from 127 up to 58. In many, many ways, Seven Wonders Duel resembles its parent game, Seven Wonders. In both games, players acquire cards that provide resources or advance their military or scientific development in order to develop a civilization and complete wonders, but of course, we all know that. We, we wrote our semester term papers on it. But one thing that is different about Seven Wonders Duel is that, as the title suggests, the game is solely for two players, who are dueling. Plus, the players aren't drafting cards simultaneously from hands of cards, but from a display of face-down and face-up cards arranged at the start of each round. Which I, I suppose is actually two things, but so what? Because good things apparently come in twos, because Repost Productions recently announced that designer Bruno Cathala is working on a second expansion for Seven Wonders Duel called Agora. Cathala was quoted as saying, This time we're with the Senate, with senators struggling to pass decrees in various chambers, unless they prefer to hatch dark plots instead. Dark plots? <laughs> the Agora expansion for Seven Wonders Duel is currently planned to be released around the Spiel in October. <laughs> Serving up 78 spots to go from 147 up to 69 this month is Food Chain Magnate, a hefty strategy game about building a fast food chain on a variable city map by shrewdly purchasing, marketing, and selling. Food Chain Magnate's climb was likely due to the recent release of its first expansion, the Ketchup Mechanism and Other Ideas. This expansion includes several new things, including a new set of milestones that completely change strategic options that are available, coffee and baristas, which are places where people will stop on their way to get food, new districts with different types of buildings, lobbyists that can place parks and new roads, new types of food such as kimchi, sushi, and noodles, new marketing types, new employees, and support for up to six players. That's a lot of stuff stuffed into this box. The official description of the ketchup mechanic also unironically boasts that this expansion does indeed also include ketchup, which makes me glad that they didn't go with their first choice, the box full of spiders expansion. The hot dog I didn't tell you I dropped on the floor until after you ate it expansion. The you've been selected randomly by the Internal Revenue Service for an extensive income tax audit expansion. The suddenly leprosy expansion. Moving on. Blasting up 99 spots to go from 143 to 44 is Rocket Men, a game that invites players to immerse themselves in a fast-paced race to the final frontier, Delaware Space. It's space, not, not Delaware, space. 
Rocket Man is a deck building confrontation of swift decision making and tactical choices in which players must use their predictive abilities and resource management skills to determine the best way to reach Earth's celestial neighbors. And we all know what our options are, we wrote our semester term papers on it. Whether by a low Earth orbit satellite or a manned base that's destined for the Red Planet, players must plan their mission carefully, equip their shuttles and rockets craftily, and then not flinch when it's time to launch. The universe may wait for you eternally, claims the marketing blurb for Rocket Men, but your opponents won't. <laughs> Any marketing blurb that, that thinks the universe will wait for them eternally has never tried to grab a hotel room when Gen Con's housing portal opens. The first game this month that breaks a climb of 100 spaces is Undaunted Normandy, which climbs 105 spots to rise from 133 to 28 this month. Undaunted Normandy is a deck building game that places players in command of American or German forces fighting through a series of missions critical to the outcome of World War II. Strong leadership can turn the tide of battle in your favor, but reckless decisions could prove catastrophic as every casualty that players take removes a card from their deck. Board Game Geek user RF900 recently announced that they have been working on an unofficial campaign app for Undaunted Normandy that would allow for playing it solo. That's, that's pretty neat, so I'm going to add a link to the forum post about this solo app in this video's description in case you'd like to check it out. And it may be worth checking out because Undaunted Normandy recently entered the ranks of the top 1,000 highest rated games on Board Game Geek. And that is really cool. So congratulations to Undaunted's designers, Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. And now, this month's biggest climber, which ravaged 113 spots up the list to go from 149 up to 36, is Blood Rage, published by Command Games. In Blood Rage, each player controls their own Viking clan's warriors, leader, and ship. And they're gonna need these because Ragnarok has come and it's the end of the world as we know it. Do the Vikings feel fine? I don't know. That's not in the script. Let me go back to the script and what it says, which is, it's the Vikings' last chance to go down in a blaze of glory and secure their place in Valhalla at Odin's side. Blood Rage's meteoric rise up the charts this month was likely due to a recent Kickstarter campaign for a digital version of the game, which completed on January 31st after raising nearly $770,000. What's more, in addition to procuring a license for the digital version of the game on Steam, its Kickstarter also included an option to purchase a slew of Kickstarter-exclusive promo items for the physical version of the game as well. This includes a new version of the four monsters only available in the original Kickstarter campaign, sculpted tokens, a set of Asgardian gods, the brand new Stag Clan, including their mystics and sculpted clan tokens, and also 24 cards to add a fifth player into the board game. The physical rewards from the Blood Rage digital campaign are currently scheduled to ship in August, with the digital game coming to Steam in December. And there are the games with the most momentum as of February 2020. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. Take care. Oh, stop drinking from your cupped hand at the dinner table, Kevin. Just, just stop it. Nobody is impressed by that. Instead, drink out of this mug. Remember, don't be like Kevin. Be not like, like Kevin. Just get a mug.